So now let's just have a quick look at how you might use these tools on some real images. Uh, what do we got here? Right, that old classic of the bride's bouquet in, in colour and the rest of the shot in black and white. Well, obviously to do it, you've got to select it. So I'm going to do this very, very roughly. Of course, there are lots of ways you could do it. You could use the uh, magnetic tool, but because there's softness where the feathers of her, I'm not quite sure what you call it, are kind of overlapping the flowers, it's probably not so easy. The way I would choose to do it, and this isn't the right way, it's just my way, I would probably put a circle around that of about that size. And here's the phone ringing. I'll have to leave it on answer phone because I'm talking to you guys. I've made a circular selection, but now what I need to do is to modify that selection because as you can probably see, there are bits of the flowers which are not correctly selected. So let's zoom in on our selected area. There we go. And start modifying it. Well, I'm going to use, sorry, wrong tool, a freehand lasso tool because I want to include these bits here, like that bit's missing. Um, I've cropped off a little bit there, which could be in. A lot of that could be taken out. These little icons here, that's a new selection. This one here means you can add to a selection. So if I want to add in part of something, which let's say the top of that flower there, which is kind of missing, let's just zoom in on it so you can see it better. Go back to the freehand lasso, add to selection. Can you see there's a little plus sign next to the cursor? That means it's going to add, so I click within the selection, draw around the bit I want to add to it, come back in, and all I have to do is let go. There we go, look, and it's snapped across and it's taken that little piece of the flower. If I want to remove part of a selection, so like this area here, we don't really want that, do we? Then I can choose that little icon there, subtract from selection. Then I would begin out here, and just kind of trace around the edge of the flowers. And obviously that's running off the screen, but you just come out here, let go, and there we go, it's removed that area. There's a quicker way to get to those tools, that is just leave it on new. If you press the shift key, I don't know if you can see that, I get a little plus symbol. If I press on the alt key, I get a minus symbol. So if I want, this is the way I work it, I press the alt key, take out this area here, uh, I'd include that bit there. I'm going to do this very, very, very roughly because otherwise it'll take ages. If you're going to do this properly as a job, then you'd probably take an awful lot more care over it. But I just want you to get the idea of what I'm doing. I'm just working my way around. By the way, if you're not sure how I'm suddenly moving the picture around, you press the space bar and you get a little hand and then you can drag your picture around much quicker than zooming in and out all the time. Add that bit in there. Take that bit out. That wasn't very well done, was it? There we go. Add that. Take that out. Zoom out a bit. I press the Z to get the zoom tool. Let's just zoom out a bit and do it a bit quicker. That's the tool. Uh, sorry, remove. I want that bit in there. Uh, that's fine. Take that out. Include that. Being as quick as I can. Let's take that around there and that bit around there and there we go we're back to the beginning. If I go view uh, fit on screen you can see I've pretty much selected the bouquet. Feathering, how much feathering do I want? Well I want that to fade, I don't want a hard edge line black and white and then into colour do I? I want it to be a fairly soft feathering. But before I do that, I realise I've jumped ahead of myself. You're thinking, well, okay, you've selected the bouquet, but it's not the bouquet we want black and white, it's everything else. Here's a real clever thing. Select, inverse. That's going to invert the selection. It's going to deselect the flowers and select everything around it. When I click, you watch, marching ants will appear around the edge. There we go. It's turned that back to front. Now this area is no longer selected, but all of this area is. Set my feather, right click, feather. 40 pixels is going to be much too much. The softness of the gradation from colour to black and white will be really, really, really fady. I'm going to go about 10 pixels. There isn't a right or wrong. You can go and explain, go and, sorry, experiment and you'll have a go at it. Now I want to drop all this area into black and white. 
So I can go image, adjust, and the way I'm going to do it is with um, hue saturation, and I'm just going to desaturate, pull the color out. There you go. Click OK. Control D to deselect, and there you go. Relatively simple. Now, I haven't done the best job in the world, but at that size, it doesn't look bad, does it? Magic wand tool. Those pictures of Jane and I that are all over our website were all shot against a blue screen because then it makes it easy to cut us out using the magic wand tool. So we shot the pictures knowing that we were going to cut ourselves out of them to put them on our website. So I can choose my magic wand tool. Up here we've got tolerance and our anti-alias and our contiguous and all layers. I'm not going to talk about contiguous and all layers. I just want to show you how you can use the tool. Leave anti-alias ticked. If you have a low number in the tolerance, it means it's wherever you click, whatever colored pixel you land on, it will choose all the pixels of that color. Now, I don't know if you can see, I can click on there and I've hardly selected a thing. It has chosen individual pixels, but it's so tiny you can't see the selection. That's because all those little pixels in the back of that picture are all very, very slightly different shades of blue. Can you see that in there? So we need to give it a little bit broader horizons. If I say, let's say 50. No, actually I'm going to show you the other end of the scale. 100. If I click in there at 100, look, it's selected all the blue, but it's also got lots of Jane's jumper. That's because there's going to be bits of blue pixel within there. And we obviously don't want it to do that. So let's go somewhere between the two at 50 pixels, 50, sorry, pixel tolerance. There we go. It's pretty much selected all of it. Now notice there's a little bit of stuff going on up here and down there. It's missed those. It's exactly the same. You press the shift key and I now get a little plus next to the icon. Click in an area that it hasn't got. There we go. Look at that. Bang. In one click I've selected everything. So to remove the blue I press delete. Press control D. Deselect. Now there's a tiny blue halo going on around because I completely forgot to feather it. Forgive me. Let's just go back there. Right click. Feather. I don't want a huge feather. I'm only going to use three here because I want the transition to be fairly swift. There we go. That's much better. Control D. There's still a bit of blue going on around the edges. Well, you can just zoom in and use the eraser tool. With a soft brush, you need to go and look at the um, dodge and burn type films to, to look at that one. And you just kind of, you can just kind of work your way along and just remove that sort of blue halo. If there's a tiny bit there it doesn't really matter because it won't notice but I can just take the edge off that and there we go. You can also of course desaturate the blue. If I choose blues and then desaturate them it takes that blue edge down quite a lot. There we go. A little extra hint for you in there. So there you go. Magic wand tool in real life. Finally let's have a quick look at the <clears throat> magnetic lasso tool. This is great where there are areas of good contrast. Those strawberries, they look fantastic, but I think they're a little bit too red. Reds sometimes do go a bit berserk on your sensor, and I think that red could use toning down a bit. So if I was going to select those, I'd go to my magnetic lasso tool. And I'd actually, before I do that, I'd zoom in on the strawberries so I can just see them really clearly on my monitor. Magnetic lasso tool. How big a brush do I want? Well, hovering that over there, I'd say that's a pretty good sized brush to work my way around those strawberries. It's currently set on 60. Great. I could choose my feathering in advance. Uh, well, in this instance, let's, let's do it. Let's call it a five feather. I can always change it by, it's, I can change it by right clicking, but I would say it's better to set it after, but we'll do it this way just to show you. Edge contrast. We've got a lot of edge contrast all the way around here, haven't we? but we've got very, very little of it up here. So this area here is going to need the low, it's going to need the um, high percentage for it to find it. If I used the low percentage, it would have real trouble finding this edge. See what I mean? So we go back to the edge contrast high. And we're going to keep the frequency high so it keeps putting in little insertion points of the selection quickly. And then we're just going to waz around the edge of our strawberries. And as you can see, it's doing a pretty good job of just very quickly whipping around the edge there. And because there's no contrast in that area, but we've got it set up properly, 
it's not doing a bad job of the selection all the way around. Into here, up around there, and join it together. There we go, we've got a really great selection. We've already got a five pixel feather going on in there. I would, on a proper job, zoom in and have a close look because I can see there's little bits here that it's kind of missed. I would just whip back to my freehand lasso tool, press the shift key because I want to include, and I just kind of work around picking up all those little bits that I might miss. Um, there's very few of them, but there you go, there's a seed there. <clears throat> I'm not gonna do this for the whole image, but there we go. Now, what I want to do is adjust the color saturation in that area. I want to play with those reds, but I don't want to affect everything else. So, image adjust. I'm going to use color balance, and in the mid-tones, I'm going to reduce the red by adding cyan. I'm going to do a little bit in the highlights. Let's just have a look. There we go. Look at the difference when I flick between the two. Very, very red. Now, I think that second red looks a bit more natural. Deselect it. <clears throat> there we go, job done. So there you go, an introduction to using selection tools to choose areas of the image that you want to work on without affecting the other areas. They're absolutely brilliant tools. Go and have a play with them. Depending on your version of Photoshop, you may have more or less sophisticated tools to use, but nonetheless, they are brilliant.